Welcome to the Envelopes Emmy Contender Series. I'm Libby Hill. Today, we're talking to Rita Moreno, who plays Lydia Riera on the TV series One Day at a Time. Rita, thank you so much for joining us in studio today. And you said Moreno, not Marino. Thank you. Uh, I am a professional. You, like, yes, I'm you here are. For you. Which makes everybody else not, huh? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what that means. We should have met sooner. No, I know. I tell everyone around me that all the time. I say I should have re met Rita Moreno sooner. Okay. <laughs> Rita, you do star on One Day at a Time, which is legitimately one of my favorite shows on television right honestly? now. Honestly? No, absolutely, honestly. Wow. It is a, for those who don't know and should know, it is a a multi-camera sitcom on Netflix um, that takes Norman Lear's classic One Day at a Time and reinvents it with a Latino family. It's incredible. But what was the process of getting you on this show? Oh, you'll love this because it was so complicated. Okay. Okay, I was sitting at a table at a fun political fundraiser, of course, oh, yeah. dinner, and uh, Norman was sitting across from me at the table and he said, I'd love you to be in my new show. And I said, okay. That's amazing. And then one and then about ten minutes later I said, wait a minute. <laughs> what is it? Wait, hold on. Yeah. How many classes and of champagne said, had and you and had we, at that point? And then oh probably three. Oh yeah. I agree to TV shows all the time after like two, so <laughs> it's touch and go. And then he explained to me that it was a, a a new look at one day at a time with a Cuban family. Right. A husbandless one. Uh, well, he's he's at uh, he's at war. Right. Yeah, he's in Afghanistan, and uh, I just said, you know, if it's with you, I'm there. I am there. What a privilege and a thrill and an honor, and it still is. We're in, going to just start our third season now, and uh, it still feels the same. I adore him. Luckily, he feels the same about me, so we are the two old farts in the show. Had you met well, actually, I'm the fartet. <laughs> Rita Moreno, fartet. fartet. That's beautiful. Gainfully employed. Gainfully for employed a third for season. a third season. Like, that's, that's something to be envied. Many people wish to be the fartet. Let me tell you. I, oh, I have so much fun. I love the show. I think we have a superlative cast. Oh, yeah. I think that the young woman, uh, Justina uh, Machado, who plays my daughter, is stellar. She is, she's brilliant. What a terrific actress. Because she's not only funny, she is heartbreaking. She can have you in tears in two seconds and then have you laughing again two seconds later. She's an astonishing talent and I'm just so happy to, she's probably the best acting partner I've ever had. I love her personally and I adore her talent. Justina is incredible. I was actually lucky enough to be there during the taping of the of the season two finale, in which you, oh. you both <gasps> somehow are hilarious and heartbreaking at the same time. It's that writing. It's incredible. It, they are incredible. Uh, there's, it's incredible writing, but your acting team is unbelievable. Don't we have a super chemistry? It does. She it and I. does. I can't believe you're not she actually and I. related. <laughs> I know. Well, we, we are that close, by the way. We've gotten that close. Of course. Um, the wonderful thing is she and I always look forward to having fights, terrible arguments as the characters, because we are so funny. Oh, you are so the funny. The arms start going in the hands and the eyes flash and the, the, the teeth gnash, and we get very, very Latina. I love that. It's so much fun. And then just like that, you snap out of it. You snap and out someone's of making it. tea or, or you know right. and, and then <laughs> you moved on because that's what family is that it's a remarkable show I don't know really I really don't know how they make that get to that gorgeous balance I don't know because it's it's almost magical where you can be excruciatingly funny one moment and before you know it or before the audience knows it something very serious is happening we were addressing an issue because every episode Every episode addresses an issue, and and some one of us is in tears, or the audience is in tears, and then without having to do any tricks, you can go right back and be funny. That's writing, that you don't have to struggle to now. Oh God, 
you know, we've got people crying. How do we get back to the fun stuff? Right. It's not a problem for these writers. It's, it's astonishing. It's, it has a lot to do, I think, with being tapped into how human emotions actually work. Like, you can turn on a dime and often do in those stressful situations. And I think it's incredible how they do that. But Justina isn't the only talent you're working with. You also have two amazing younger actors. Oh. Isabella, ridiculous! I those know kids. it's it's Isabella yeah. Gomez and yeah. Marcel Ruiz. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about working with them. I adore them. They've become my kids. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm just such a mother at heart. Anyway, I'm a very motherly, maternal kind of person. I'm maternal with uh, Justina. Oh yeah, and um, she's become like my kid, and uh, the kids are an absolute joy. They are. For one thing, they have such good manners. And oh, really? I, I think it's because they're Latino. They've been brought up a certain way. And uh, you know, when Marcel is done in, in the makeup room, he always says thank you to the makeup oh. person or to the person who's just cut his hair. Oh my goodness. I mean, and I just look at him and I say, oh, I'm so in love with him. I'm such a grandma and I'm also a dirty old woman. <laughs> There's That's no, quite a mix. There's no, it's one hell of a mix. It's tough, tough to it's combine tough those two things. But uh, I'm, a gra I'm a grandmother of two boys. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I saw, took one look at this kid with that punum, <gasps> that face, that facha. Wow, is he gorgeous? Oh, so gorgeous. And I wondered, <sighs> as a grandmother of two boys, how much of that you were channeling into oh, Alex. absolutely. As a character. Absolutely. And of course, when my two grand boys mm -hmm. came to visit the set, they just, they were so thrilled. Who were they? Or were they jealous? No, they were thrilled. <laughs> they good. Were, no, they were thrilled to meet them. Oh, yeah. You know, kids their own age that could talk to, they, it was fabulous. That's amazing. Great time. That's so and, great. And then, of course, there's Todd. Oh, yeah, Todd. Hi there. <laughs> and you know what he wrote? I love the way he put it. He put his name, the character name, on his dressing room door. And it's spelled E. Schneider. Oh my God. She can't say That's Schneider. That's so beautiful. That's she goes so on beautiful. E. Schneider. It does. Like, what he's that? glorious. That's the newsroom. It's a, it's a very business. There's, we're working in a live newsroom right now. So oh, it gets for God's very, sake. No, I know. It's good to know that things are still happening around us, though, that well, the world hasn't melted as away. As long yet. as we have this administration, things will always be going on. That's, That's all I'll say. so true. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to get into that. Moving on. <laughs> but talk to me a little bit about, Lori, uh, about Lydia's storylines in season two, um, specifically about her struggle with citizenship. Um, so much of her identity is wrapped up in being Cuban. How, how was that to play, to work you know, through that balance? I found out something that I didn't know, that when you become a citizen of the United States, you have to renounce your citizenship in your original country, which I think is dreadful. You know, I really felt like, like uh, Lydia. I didn't know that, and when I found that out, when we did our first reading, we always do what we call a table reading mm -hmm. when we have a new script for that week. And I kept saying, what, what? No. That's so unfair. Why would you have to? And I felt exactly as Lydia felt. Because why should you have to give that up? I don't get that. Why can't there be such a thing as dual citizenship? I don't know. I've never understood. But I, I, you know, ever since then, I, I just, I feel terrible for people who have to give up their beautiful country that you know that they that may live in their heart. Exactly. It's awful. So it was hard for me to uh, accept it the way it was very difficult for Lydia, the character, to accept it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember, I think in the first, uh, the first season, it's when it's found out that she's not a citizen, she says, because I don't want to give up right. My, my, right. My, my roots to my country. And I understood that then perfectly. Exactly. That's something I'm... You know what I wished for? What? As Rita Moreno playing Please. this character, I wished that she had reneged on American citizenship. I really did, because I thought, well, for one thing, that's Lydia. Right. And for another, um, I think she has a right, you know, to hang on to her roots on paper. Exactly. Also. And I, I also thought it would make for some very interesting episodes. 
Well, exactly. We're living in a very complicated world, and, yeah. and with her making the choice not to become a citizen, that could that get very, very complicated very quickly. Yeah, that um, would have opened a lot of different doors to absolutely. stories. Absolutely. Let me ask you about something a bit more granular. Um, I was listening to a pod. You know what? Oh. That's the second time I've heard somebody use that word, and I don't know what the hell it means. Um, it means a little more detail-oriented, going a little deeper than maybe we would typically. Because I heard somebody say that on television. I think it was one of the lawyers, the lawyers, oh, yeah. who said granular, and I thought, what the hell does he mean by that? Yeah, I think it's like based in like grains, so like in grains of rice. Small or grain, things, I think so, like detail work. Okay, now Is tell okay? me the question. Okay, <laughs> Justina did a podcast that I listened to where she spoke about Hollywood depicting Hollywood having trouble depicting Latino culture as non-homogenous. Specifically, both you and Justina are have Puerto Rican heritage. That's right. And you're playing a Cuban family. Right. Does that, what was that like for you? Did you, did it feel different than, and, and how did Gloria, who is Gloria Calderon? Callet. Callet. Who is our, one of our head writers, yeah. Yes. Um, whose family is Cuban. How right. did she? This is, this, much of this is her story. Absolutely. I'm really her mom. I really am. In you fact, when her, I put right? that wig on and look younger, uh, I look like her mom. Oh my god! Her mom has that same kind of hairdo. That's amazing. Yeah. How was meeting her? Oh, wonderful! She loved having me play her. <laughs> Are you kidding? Well, it would be an How honor. How can you not love Lydia? That's so true. Of course, and she's sexy. That's one of my. That was one of my caveats. I said. I want her just because she's older doesn't mean that she's uh, and everything's turned to dust down here. Absolutely. And uh, they love the writers and Norman love that idea that she should be sexual. Well, and it's very, I mean, it's very in keeping in some of the other shows that Netflix has because Grace and Frankie is, is very much about older women living mm -hmm. their best lives. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, so it makes totally sen total sense that Lydia would be a sexual mm -hmm. creature. But to get back to your original question, uh, I didn't see that that was a problem at all. She's Hispanic. And uh, Cubans are different in the sense that they speak uh, with a slightly different accent. They speak very, very fast. <laughs> I mean, really fast. When you're talking to a Cuban, I always have to say, slow down, because I don't know what the hell you're saying. <laughs> uh, there's that. And um, it, it's a very Cuban thing, too, very Cuban thing to favor the boy and the family. But that's also kind of Puerto Rican. It's Latino. You know, the, 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 the boys are usually overindulged. They're usually overweight because they're always popping all <laughs> kinds of crap into their mouths. And, and uh, so there are certain things about, and I love all that. You know, I love that she's so big and yet narrows down to something very, very serious and heartbreaking sometimes and, mm -hmm. and moving. Mm -hmm. that's, what's, that's why the writing is so good because it's so easy to fall into the trap of just being like this, you know, all yeah. the time. And that's a big mistake. Right. And I'll... in fact, even now, we still have to, now and then, I say, wait a minute, um, I don't think she would say that, or that she wouldn't say it that way, right. that kind of thing. It, it, and we have the freedom, by the way, to do that, to oh, talk to our writers like that, which is heaven. Yes. It's, it can't be all accent. It can't be all dramatics. There has to be a core there. Absolutely. There has to be a, a, a woman mm -hmm. inside this character. And uh, I really work very hard at that. I try very hard to, when I have the opportunities, to be respectful right. of this woman. That's, that's beautiful. And I said that one day to, the, to uh, our head writers because I had a real uh, problem with something they had written. Oh. in her for her mm -hmm. and I, it was really bothering me and um, I took them aside and we went into the green room at the studio and I said here's my problem and uh, and I said you know I love this woman she's your mother Gloria <laughs> and I said and I respect her and I just can't buy what she's doing or say whatever it was I don't remember yeah. anymore but I said I, I just don't buy that and I don't think the audience will and I, I said, I think you're writing yourself into a corner. Now, you can't say that to writers too often. No. You don't want to. You, don't want to. you can't play that card too often. No, you don't want to. And, you know, I was really nervous, too, about doing that. 
because I have a problem. I'm a very direct person, and I'm, I'm really quite honest. And uh, so often somebody will say, do you know so-and-so? And I said, yes, I do. And they'll say, isn't she sweet? And I'll say, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I, did, I, I just did that this morning. Oh, was it about, was it about me? That's so awkward. But my so makeup awkward. man was talking about somebody, and uh, he said, uh, yeah, he's sweet. And I said, I don't think he's sweet at all. I said, he's very talented, but he's not sweet. Right. And he started to laugh. He says, boy, that's you. You do not mince words. No. So it's hard for someone like myself to corner two fabulous writers for whom I have enormous and profound respect and say, I don't think you did it this time, or you done do, did something that I think is just off. Right. It's not easy to do that. No. You don't want to do that. No. But that's why that it communication... makes me really nervous. Oh. Because I do have a big mouth. No. Oh, yeah. Okay, yes. But... <laughs> sorry. Sorry. We can edit that out. We can't. It's live. Um, we can edit... No, we can't edit that out either. Uh -huh. I'll let you drink. That's okay. Yeah. So, let's talk about your career a little bit. I've heard you've done other things before this show. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, you've had great success in basically every venue, um, theater, film, television, music. Um, and throughout all that, you had a very specific moral code as, po as with regards to what you would play. It wouldn't be, as I understand it, stereotypes. It wouldn't be... Uh, well, I got, I got the courage to turn down stuff. Uh, I... You'll be disappointed in this, but I got the courage after the Oscar. That makes sense. It took sense. me a long, long time to, I mean, I would turn things down, mm -hmm. but uh, I usually wouldn't say why I didn't have right. the courage to do that. You know, I'm a kid that was came from Puerto Rico and was made to believe by all kinds of circumstances that I didn't have value or worth. And so it took me a very long time to get up the courage to, I mean, I can tell you right now, just to show you how far I've come, that I really like myself. You know what it takes to be able to say that about yourself? I actually do. Years and years and years and years of hard work on yourself mm -hmm. and therapy, mm -hmm. for oh, me, for me yeah. anyway. Well, for me too. But I can actually say that without any embarrassment whatsoever. That's so beautiful. It is it beautiful. It really is. I mean, but it's taken me a long time. I think it takes most people a long time. I don't think it's something we're ra we're born with. No, un un unhappily. Right. It's something we have to learn. Well, also remember when you are a child and you are made to feel that you don't have value. Children are very tender creatures. Of course. And uh, they quickly pick up. They, I mean, I remember thinking, I don't know why, but I'm not the most likable person in the world. I guess. But I don't know why. So, and you accept that, right? And if you're, you've lived with that for years and years and years, it's a very, very tough thing to get over. Right. Really tough. Right. And that's why I really always think that uh, going into therapy, psychotherapy, for me was the best thing I've ever done for mm -hmm. myself. I think everyone should be in therapy, not because there's anything wrong with anyone, but because it helps to be able to talk about yourself honestly. And that's what I'm hearing you can't, from you. It's so hard to do it honestly without another person there to say, exactly. you're fooling yourself. Right. You know, you're not, you're not being truthful about yourself. You can't do that on your own. No. Rarely. Maybe some people can, but I certainly wasn't capable of it. No. I don't think, I think most people aren't. How, talk to me about your career. Because you were, and forgive me, this might be awkward, because you were so talented at so many different things, were you able to walk away from film for a while and be like, that's fine, I'll go be on the stage, or I will... No, I wasn't, I wasn't able to walk away from it. It was with me all the time. The need, yeah. the disappointment. I mean, I cannot tell you after having won the Oscar and the Golden Globe for West Side Story how my heart broke that I couldn't get a job. I mean, it was just, it was heartbreaking. And I can't forget that I can still feel how that felt. I couldn't understand it. Why couldn't I get jobs? I was offered some things. 
I don't want to make it seem one-sided. But they were uh, all bad versions of West Side Story without the music. And I remember thinking, you know, holding my little gold man under one arm and the Golden Globe on the other, saying, I'm not going to do that again. And ha-ha, I showed them I didn't work in films for seven years. It's heartbreaking. It's awful. It's a tough business. And, and, the, and the secret behind having to deal with the toughness of this business is not getting hard. That's hard. That's difficult. Right. Not becoming cynical. Or and better. I'm not. Right. You can't be, or else you can't continue on. Well, I think you can, well, but uh, you're a different that's person. Fair. Exactly. Um, have you seen it change at all now? Um, you've been on some amazing shows lately, I think of, uh, I mean, obviously One Day at a Time, but also Jane the Virgin. Are you seeing <laughs> a different- was great. Oh, it was, it was so amazing. Was that fun? Oh. I want to go back on it. I, yeah. I ran into uh, Gina because oh. she and I are very close. Of course. And uh, at the Oscars, and I said, I want to go on the show again. She said, well, tell me when you're free. I want to be that woman again that, the, the, oh, yeah. what's his name's father? Yeah, mother. Rogelio's mother. Ro yes. Isn't he delicious? Oh, he is delightful. <laughs> so delightful. I kept breaking up so hard doing that, <laughs> doing that episode. <laughs> I really broke up so hard. He was just hilarious. Well, it was so delightful. And, and are you seeing any changes in the landscape oh, as yes. far as opportunities <clears throat> go? There are definitely changes. There are definitely changes. But the door is still not wide open. Right. Uh, Ricardo Montalban used to say at the time, he says, the door is just barely ajar. <laughs> That's changed. But now, here's the thing. I think we are, as Hispanics, we're very underrepresented, yes. particularly in films. And it's not great in TV, but it's better. <clears throat> but uh, I think we have to take some lessons from the black community who's really done it. I have enormous admiration for the black community, for all they have done for themselves right. and their community. And I think we need to take some lessons from that, and I think we need more than ever, as they have done, and as we are doing, actually, mm -hmm. persevering. Right. We really have to you know, try to knock that door open. Right. It's not easy, and uh, it's, it's kind of depressing that we still, it's still a battle. It's yeah. crazy. It, it's hard to believe that we've come this far and, and yet not. Right, exactly, and haven't come further. And you know, it isn't just Hispanics. I mean, how often do you see an Asian person? Exactly, exactly. They're invisible, right. practically. Right, and, and diversity means diversity. It doesn't mean just one exactly. type of yeah. non-white person. That's exactly right. So I have some questions for, from viewers at home. You do? Yeah, I do. I have it on my magic iPad. Okay. Um, so Esther on Facebook asked, what has been the favorite, your favorite role in your career? I would have to say um, Anita in West Side Story because after all, that's, that's the role that really finally brought me to the attention of a huge public, which means all over the world. Right. So, and then the two awards, my goodness, the, the, uh, the, uh, oh God. The um, Oscar and the Oscar Golden and, Globe. And the Golden Globe, that's the one I couldn't think of. Yeah, so obviously it, it's oh, gotta yeah. be those two. Well, it's hard. Well, I, I have to tell you that I adore playing Lydia Riera. She is so much fun. I can, I can never wait every week with a new script to see what she's up to, what, what kind of word she's going to maul. Will you play, will you say Vicks Vaporub, please? Big Vaporub. <laughs> I'm going to make it my ringtone. Like, I haven't told anyone this, but I have a whole plan You know, plan a friend of that. mine already has it's me saying so that. perfect. On his, on his ringtone. Big Vaporub. <laughs> I want it to be, I want it to be like a, a meme. I want everyone to do it. <laughs> It's, it's the new hot trend. It's so funny, it's too, because we, Vicks was the thing that cured everything well, yeah. in the Hispanic community. Yeah. I was always getting it slapped on my chest because I was a sickly kid, lots of colds, and a big baporu was the answer. Yeah. <laughs> it reminded me so much of my big fat Greek wedding with the Windex, That's and right. I was like, 
that's so true. There are these little, these are the cure-alls in, in these little, com in, not little, in these communities. And it's just, there's just a resonance to it that I, that I loved. Um, I'm so, glad you brought that. I love oh, that. It's incredible. Tell me a little bit, do you have any idea what's going to happen for, for Lydia in season three? Not a clue. a clue. I have some ideas that I would love for her. I would love her to try to get involved in local, very tiny local politics, yes. like city council, where she just, you know, raises the roof and gets into all kinds of trouble. That would be so much fun. Oh, yeah. She could be a real hell raiser, I think. Exactly. I mean, I'd it love could to be, see it. But something so simple as, as the garbage collection and why that's not right. working properly, and she's the, she has a complaint. The sidewalk thing <laughs> that that Elena was so upset about, like <laughs> in it. the second season, like maybe she can get on board. Maybe this is how they will bond. <laughs> It'll be amazing. Ah. So Heidi from Facebook says that she loved you on the Rockford Files, and she's oh, wondering yeah. what it was like to work with James Garner. Working with James, he became a dear friend. I loved him. Jimmy Garner was exactly what you hoped he would be. He was really just that oh. person. He was darling. <clears throat> Excuse me. He had a great sense of humor. He um, was a sexy guy, I thought. Uh, I did a movie with him. Did you? You might want to look up called uh, Marlowe. Philip Marlowe, the oh, detective. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But we, we became really very, very close and dear friends. Oh. That's and amazing. he was wonderful. He was great to everybody. He uh, he was great to the crew. He was great to. He just he had no um, he had no notions about himself. He was just this boy, this right. country boy, and he really was. Just coming in to go to work. That's right. With his coworkers. Yep. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Well, people have so many questions for you. Um, Tomas on Facebook asked, "When you have time truly to yourself." How do you like to spend your time off, if that happens, or if it could happen someday? Uh, I love to garden, and uh, it doesn't mean I'm good at it. It just means that I love to do it. I mean, a lot of things have died on me. Well, that's I'll admit. That's I love to cook, and I especially love to cook for company. I've heard that about you. Yeah, I do. I love to cook for friends and all that kind of stuff. What was the last thing you, you cooked for company? Uh, the last thing I did was a uh, brisket. Oh, which is not which is not Hispanic, but I love brisket. But it's a perfect food, uh -huh. so I think I it's think so. I love it's, it. It's just a human food. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Was it well received? Oh, of course. I'm a good cook. Otherwise, they don't get invited back. Yeah, not, no, no, no. They, well, they no. love my cooking. That's incredible. Wait, so what do you are you gardening vegetables? Are you gardening gardening flowers? I try to do. I I've been trying to do tomatoes, which I, I I'm nuts for tomatoes. Oh yeah. But if I'm not home, like when I was doing the series for the second season, I was yeah. really in, in Los Angeles for months and months and months. Because you live up north. I live up north. I live in Berkeley. Right. Yes. Right. And I have a, an extraordinary house, beautiful garden, a beautiful, everything is gorgeous there. It looks like, uh, I mean, you never want to leave it. No. But you can't take care of tomatoes if you're down in L.A. That's true. So maybe you can get them travel pots. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something this year. Last year, what I did was I had a little little porch kind of thing. Uh, I'm on the last floor of my apartment building, and I got one of those already started oh, tomato yeah, yeah. plants, and that's what I did. That's, there's tons of sun up there, so that's great. I did that. You made it work. But. Um, those are the things I love to do. I love to watch, mo I love movies. That's pretty, almost a hobby, I love movies. Oh, that's, that's awesome. I, I talk to so many actors who don't have time to, or they don't make time to kind of stay up on oh, no, media. No, 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 I, I have to watch movies, I love movies. That's amazing. I think they're magical, I love actors. Oh, Actresses yeah. and actors, I love watching good performances. I'm in love with the whole business of acting. And I love to see people, you know, do miraculous things right. with a role in, in, a, in a film. That's so inspiring. Mm. So they're telling me we have to stop talking now, okay. at least on camera. Okay. So to end things, we have a lightning round. The lightning round is just four, 
five some questions that I will ask you and you will answer the first thing off the top of your head, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Okay. Are you ready to play? Okay. Lightning round. What was the last show you binge watched? I don't binge watch. Fair. Done. If you could go back and be on any TV show ever, what would it be? All in the family. Nice. A lot of people watch TV to unwind. What do you do to unwind? Garden. Watch I watch, no, I watch no. the news. I, I'm a news junkie. Oh, wow. To unwind? That's intense. A nice big glass of wine. Okay, that's fine. That, and, that makes more sense. And then I will very often talk back to the set. And I'll say, you are an idiot. I have a very good idea for a live stream show for you, but I'll talk to you <laughs> about that off camera. Um, what do you know now that you wished you had known on your first acting job? Uh, what do I know now? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a hard one for me because I'm still learning things. I am. And you know who I'm learning from too? Mm. My partner, um, um, Dustina Machado. Oh, she's yeah. a terrific actress. She's so great. So, uh, what would I tell my young... I don't know. I, I, I have no answer to that. No, that's fine. Okay. Have you ever been fired from an acting job? I did. You did? I was fired a hundred years ago from a play oh, no. by, um, um, oh, what's his name? Um, oh, my God. See, this is what happens when you get old. Oh, this is what's happening to me now. It's really oh, ages. Uh, no excuse for me. I was fired me. from a play because they felt I wasn't good enough. I was about... 18. Well, and I, I was absolutely destroyed. On the bright side. Because it was Kazan. Oh. It was Ilya Kazan. And oh, who was the, the, uh, the playwright who did a, a streetcar named Desire? Uh, um, you know who I mean. Yeah, I do know who you mean. The audience knows who you mean, too. Okay. It's okay. And he said, She can't read my goddamn poetry. That's what he said about me. To be fair, you ended up on the right Tennessee side of Williams. history there. Tennessee Williams. Well, you got the best of Tennessee Williams, so I, I think that counts. I don't know that I did, but uh, I was absolutely <sighs> devastated. It's a devastating thing. Okay, we saved the most important question for last. Which Golden Girls character do you most identify with? Dorothy, Rose, Blanche, or Sophia? Oh, God. I love... Um... I love, um, oh, give me the names again. Okay, Dorothy, which was B. Arthur. Right. Rose, who was Betty White. Blanche. Blanche. Blanche, I you are definitely that. a Blanche. I am Blanche. You are so a Blanche. <laughs> You're the motherly, dirty grandma. Like, it's perfect. Yeah, oh, I just loved it. She was wonderful. Oh, she, they but, were you know, I, I watch that show all the time. Mm -hmm. oh, do you? Oh, I watch that show all the time, and I watch, um, I watch, um, um, What's the name of that show? Um, oh, God. Everybody Loves Raymond. I love Everybody Loves Raymond. It's great. It's amazing. Great, great, it's another great, great multi writing. Mm -hmm. And also, what was interesting about that is that our, uh, one of our uh, writers is one of the writers from uh, oh, Everybody Loves great. Raymond. That's perfect. Yeah, he's fabulous. Yes. Rita, thank you so much for joining it's us my, here today. It's my pleasure. It was fun. Thank you so much for those of us join. <laughs> thank you for joining us with this live chat with Rita Moreno. For more Rita, check out One Day at a Time on Netflix. And for more LA Times Emmy chats, check out latimes.com.